Over the past few years, we did a lot of things from an anesthetic point of view, from a pain management and physical therapy point of view, to really improve outcomes, to, to make you more comfortable, to make you safer, to um, get you back to, to normal faster. What I hope to go over is and give you an idea of a more expanded view of perioperative medicine, uh, of joint replacement surgery. Over the years, what I've noticed, people come in often with a very narrow or focused view of what goes on with their anesthesia or their recovery, where um, they come in, they meet their anesthesiologist, they go to sleep, we take good care of you, keep you safe, you wake up and you get morphine afterwards and you start the rehab process that you've started to learn about here. And what I hope to show you that it's a little bit more complicated than that, and we actually work together uh, hard to, to make it a little bit more complicated and better than just that. On the left side, you'll see a circle of all the different types of way we could give you morphine types of medis medications uh, for pain. And there's a little cartoon of a knee replacement there. Um, there's a PCA pump, patient controlled analgesia, where we could give you a button to press. You could give yourself pain medications. Uh, this is intrathecal or spinal morphine. We could give you morphine uh, into the spinal anesthetic that you get for your surgery that lasts 18 to 24 hours to give you comfortable. IV morphine types of medicines, this is Percocet, we give you pills, and they're great. I have nothing against pain medicines and morphine types of pain medicines, but I, I'm sure if I queried a few people in here who've ever had any of these medications, you notice they could cause nausea, vomiting, uh, yeah, obviously sedation, a loved one had surgery, and they get some pain medicines and they get sedated. Uh, urinary retention requiring catheterizations, and it really inhibits the recovery that you need. So what we've worked hard is to, to minimize those. Uh, not to take them away, but to minimize them. If you need them, you, you get them. Uh, but we have more of a state of art approach to try to get you on that treadmill, to try to doing uh, your physical therapy. This, uh, I'll talk about a little bit more, is my ultrasound machine, uh, which we use for uh, regional uh, peripheral nerve blocks. When we place a nerve block, uh, it's a numbing medicine that, you know, often if we just give one shot block, it lasts 10 to 15 hours. But if we hook it up to a pump and a catheter, very similar to when a lady comes in for labor, labor because most people know will last more than, than a day. So we could hook it to a pump, and, uh, a pump which will conf continually infuse the medications. And most people are surprised, even simple medications like Tylenol, uh, Celebrex, NSAIDs, Advil types of medications. Uh, really work well together to minimize the opioid pain medicines you need. And this is a neuropathic pain medicine, Neurontin. So this is an expanded view of, of these guys here. These are your anesthesiologists. Uh, we, we, we think of more than just uh, taking care of you in the operating room and just giving you morphine. And, and you'll see we've had some really dramatic results. So what is the current state of the art? Is to keep you comfortable, to have less opioid side effects, to keep you safe. I'll talk about some data of how our efforts have actually helped patients be safer after the surgery. Rehab is easier. Patient satisfaction is through the roof after these surgeries. Uh, I think we're up to the top 1% nationally in our Prescani scores. Uh, patients satisfied, satisfied with the aftercare after their surgery. Better outcomes and uh, in, in this age, even cost. Uh, it's, it, patients can go home sooner. They, le they need less medications to treat their nausea, less catheters for urinary retention. They're safer. Um, so it's, it's, it's really something that we're very proud of. So what is multimodal analgesia? You've heard it a few times today, and, and a lot of it is, is using those other medications which I showed you to minimize the opioid types of medications. This is our cartoon where you see how a surgical stimulus starts in the tissues in the skin, travels up towards the spinal cord, up the spinal cord, and then to the brain, and that's how the brain senses discomfort after surgery. And this is a long list of different mediators that, that mediate that, that signal, that pain signal, from the skin to the pain. Not one of these is an opioid mediator. So, I mean, opioids do play a role, uh, but not, the, not an opioid receptor. These are different types of mediators, so there's more to it than just giving somebody a morphine type of medication. We talked about nerve blocks. These are two diagrams. The one on the left is a diagram of somebody's shoulder, if they're having a shoulder replacement, or even a rotator cuff surgery that Dr. Miller uh, often does. The middle picture is of the lower extremity of the hip and the knee, the nerves that go down to the hip and the knee. And in any, depending on where the surgery is, we could deposit numbing medicines, Novocaine types of medicines, to those areas, numb up that area, and, uh, and numb it up for uh, 10 to 15 hours or, or for a few days afterwards. Um, and by numbing that area, uh, you, while that block is in, in, in place, you don't need the, as many of those, as many opioids. Uh, you're more comfortable. Less of those side effects that we talked about. You sleep better. Uh, you get better rehab. Go home or to rehab quicker. Uh, and then the satisfaction we mentioned. These are my two favorite toys that, uh, that I use, the uh, ultrasound machines. 
I always like to tell a story when you do regional nerve blocks is before I started training, when you met your anesthesiologist, you got a nerve block, you would go in with a needle depending on where, where the surgery is, and when the anesthesiologist poked your nerve, you said, ouch, and then you were in the right space. And, and it's gotten a little bit more sophisticated that with these ultrasound machines, we see everything in real time. We see where the nerves are, we see the surrounding blood vessels, the muscles, the tissues, uh, see the needle as it approaches the nerves, we don't have to touch it. Just nearby, inject some medication, the numbing medicine bathes the nerves, uh, and it anesthetizes them for, uh, for as long as the, the numbing medicine is there. It's, it's very useful. We know exactly where the medicine's going, we know exactly where the catheter is placed, uh, and I'm very confident that I could give you a good block. The benefits of an ultrasound, once you learn it, and I think a lot of anesthesiologists in the country are scrambling to try to learn it, it's, it's easier. Uh, you don't have to go in, you don't have to poke a nerve. More recently, a lot of anesthesiologists will go in with a needle that is attached to a, a stimulator that delivers a little current. And when you approach the nerve or touch the nerve, it'll cause, cause your muscles to twitch. And then you can localize that you're in the right area there. Um, and this is a lot easier. You don't have to touch the nerve, you don't have to stimulate it. It's more comfortable for the page, a patient. I'll, I'll argue it's safer for a lot of the procedures and the success rate increases. Now we mentioned that once you do these blocks, they do wear off. So for many procedures, especially for the shoulder replacements and the knee replacements, we'll place a catheter there that could stay up for up to two days, give the numbing medicine through a disposable pump, often a disposable pump that could be thrown away at home, uh, and it'll give the numbing medicine for up to two days. Putting it all together, when you get the numbing medicines there, and you start giving other medications, even as simple as Tylenol or the NSAIDs, the Advil types of medications, neuropathic medications like Neurontin. We do other things in We give steroids to decrease inflammation and provide comfort. Um, and that also decreases nausea, vomiting. We use ketamine. I'll circle all the medications here. We use ketamine, which is a, um, a neuromodulator almost, where it helps prevent chronic pain. Uh, the biggest things we're trying to prevent is not only to keep you comfortable during the surgery, but when you have a large surgery or some type of insult to, to tissues, they get irritated and they could hurt for uh, weeks or months afterwards. And so we try to give medications to not only keep you comfortable now, but to try to keep you comfortable weeks or months afterwards. So when Tori approached me a few years ago and she wanted to, to start doing this, uh, I was very excited because I, I knew it would be very helpful and work very, very, uh, it would work well. It took us a good six months to, to get a protocol together and another three months after that to implement. But we started collecting data in the beginning in January of how much, then this is one is intrathecal morphine, which is the spinal morphine you get with your surgery. Pretty stable. They weren't getting that much Tylenol. But then in August, and we started changing our protocol, and it took about three months to fully implement. And after three months, we find that our patients no longer needed spinal morphine anymore. Uh, and that was the biggest cause of nausea, vomiting, itchiness, constipation, and urinary retention that we had after surgery was that spinal morphine. It kept patients comfortable. It, it helped. But it was one of our biggest culprits for uh, side effects. And we started increasing a lot of the multimodal medications. And this one just goes to show you uh, how much uh, talent we started using after. The average opioid use for um, joint replacements, this is hip replacements and knee replacements. Again, in the beginning of the year, about 125 to 150 milligrams of morphine during the hospital stay. Um, as we started introducing the protocol, uh, it started decreasing by a third. And by the end, we're not using intrathecal morphine anymore. We're not needing that PCA pump that I showed you more that you give yourself medications. We give you the multimodal medications and if you're sore, you could ask for one of those pain pills or, or an IV pain medication. But uh, we find that the patients weren't pressing the button anymore. Uh, and so we were down to around 50 milligrams of morphine uh, for a two to three day hospital stay. Nausea vomiting for the first 18 to 24 hours was very bad because especially because of that intrathecal morphine, uh, about 30 patients were nauseated. They were complaining that they were nauseated. About 15 to 20 percent would often just throw up the first night. And a lot of studies have been showing that for a lot of patients, that nausea vomiting is worse than pain, actually. Uh, you just don't feel well. I mean, a lot of times you could get a pain pill, you'll fall asleep, it's very sedating. But if you don't take away the nausea, it's very, uh, very uncomfortable. And a lot of people rate that worse than, than pain often. And with the new multimodal protocol, we're getting down to uh, 5%, very rare uh, vomiting. And the nausea is, uh, is much more uh, improved also. What have we accomplished over the last few years? About half the opioids that we used to take is probably 
even better now, we just stopped collecting the data once we had a new computer system, so it's hard for us to have a continuous uh, trend. Uh, but we've noticed that patients are more comfortable. Tori tells me stories where years ago, if a patient got out of bed after surgery, took a few steps towards the bathroom, it was a great day. And now physical therapists will tell you that it's common for patients just to walk down the hallway. And if they're not, then we actually have to look into it because they, they should be. Uh, and so it really has increased comfort and, uh, and physical therapy and rehab. Less side effects we talked about. I have to credit Al Taglavia, one of the other anesthesiologists who spearheaded uh, some data collection on safety uh, during this time period where we instituted, where we call RRTs, or rapid response teams, where somebody, if they had too many opioids, they got sedated, they were too sleepy. Well, we have a whole protocol of uh, things we could do to, to make sure they're safe, and that significantly decreased over the time, um, and it was some dramatic results. Rehab is easier. We, we're easier. we talked about patient satisfaction, um, better outcomes, and cost. So in summary, I hope you have an idea of, of an expanded idea of what we could do as anesthesiologists and as a team to keep you more comfortable. Uh, I hope that if you plan on having surgery, whether it's joint replacement or any type of surgery, that you keep in your mind that it's more than just going to sleep and getting morphine types of medications. Uh, there's more things that should be going through your team's mind, and there's a lot of people in this room dedicated to, to making sure that happens for you over here. Uh, so speak to your anesthesiologist about them. We're always available. Thank you. <laughs>